So the guys were here this week. And they got our septic tank put in. They got our our well hooked up. We've got a hydrant out there for water by our garden and our orchard and stuff later. And our, our pump out goes out there. The gray water pump out from the septic tank. So yesterday I had to rent a coring drill and drill these big holes through the wall here. I mentioned before it's a lot easier to put holes in concrete before the concrete's there. You have to get a big drill with like a diamond bit and use water and it cuts the hole through the concrete. Actually I've still got the core here, it's kind of cool. You can see what our wall looks like. So that's what that drill takes out. Got the foam on the outside, eight inches of concrete, the foam on the inside. And we got lucky, we didn't hit any rebar. Lots of times you do, but that drill will go right through it. You just have to take your time. But yeah, so that's, that was yesterday's project. And that comes into the house in the corner here, kind of under the office. Right here. So the orange cap there, obviously that's the sewer line, the septic line going out to the septic tank there. This one here is power for the septic pump. And this one here is that yard hydrant out by the trees. So around here, to have a gray water pump out like we have, you, uh, you need to have a minimum of 10 acres. And we knew that when we subdivided these plots out so our lot is 10.00 acres. So we have exactly enough land to be allowed to pump this out here. So <clears throat> there's two sides in the septic tank. There's a, a solid side and a gray water side. And the solid side is pretty much always full right to the top. And as the, uh, the, the water and the, you flush your toilets, you drain your sinks, it all falls into the solid side and then just the, the solids settle down to the bottom and the water flows over the top of this little wall in the middle and once that gets up to a certain level your septic pump kicks in and it pumps it out so here's that yard hydrant <clears throat> this goes down eight feet underground this pipe goes down eight feet and there's a little bed of rocks down there so when you open this up, your water is going to come out. When you close this, that water will all drain out of this pipe down into that bed of rocks and this pipe will be empty so it never freezes. You could use this all year, all winter, that'll work. <clears throat> and then our septic pump out is over here. We're not going to leave it pointing back at the lilacs like this. This will kill the lilacs, but we'll, uh, this is where all our water is going to come out. Pump kicks in, pumps it out here. And about once a year, probably we'll have to get the solid side sucked out. Just a, a vacuum truck comes, sucks everything out of there. And that's it. That's how that works. So here is the septic tank. This over here is the gray water side and this is the solid side. So this side is going to be full pretty much all the way to the top all the time. And as you use it, it just kind of spills over. There's a little hole there behind that white thing. I don't know if you can see it. But the water will just spill through that hole into this side. And then once the, there's a float switch on that pump and once it hits a certain level, that pump will kick in and pump it out over there. When the pump kicks out, whatever water is in that line, it'll just drain back. So that pipe will be empty all the time also. So we should never have any problems with anything freezing. The guys did a great job. They had some big equipment out here. They had a huge excavator and a directional boring machine. <clears throat> directional boring machine, if you don't know what that is, it's really cool. They can take a rod and basically steer it underground and weave it uh, and they have a little sensor they can kind of track where it is and they can push a rod and they can hit a target 
like a six inch target from hundreds of feet away if they're really really good at it and it's pretty cool how they did it here comes here's my dad showing up to work <laughs> and here's uh here's how the water gets into the house comes in here this isn't packed very well yet but they had a big trench dug here this was eight feet in the ground so it doesn't freeze again and they had uh i took some video of this before but they had a really cool fitting and a, and a tool i didn't know how this worked until i watched the guys do it but they've got this really neat little fitting that they attach to the side of the well uh the well casing and then they attach the pipe to that and that goes eight feet down here to the house and then this little pipe here that's to power the well pump that wires inside the house already right now and this while we had the trench there the guys suggested we just uh run water out here from the house because you can't really get it directly from the well so it'll go from the well to the house back from the house out there we already had the trench eight feet deep it's easy to do now if you wanted to do it later it would cost you a bunch you're ripping up your landscaping so we said what the heck for the cost of the pipe let's put it in so that's that like finished so the verticals are all in they slid right in on the when you're using the middle holes they slide right down like real easy now the one I pull of course doesn't move but uh, and then we've got the two bars at the top and the two bars over the windows so we've basically got four 15 m rebars in this little block here basically turning this into a concrete beam all the way around the top of the house it's all done the same there with the four rebar so it should be super 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 solid super strong should never bend or ever have any problems that's what that looks like uh, with the two beside each door buck and window buck I haven't tied these ones yet back over here yeah so we got the two bars here's our bedroom door so we got the two bars here and I had extra corner bars so I just stuck them in above the doors so I figured the doors opening and closing just that vibration would I don't know I figured it was a good place for them so between here I didn't have really have room to put because uh, there's a window and a door pretty close here so I didn't have room to put uh, the two for e each buck so I just stuck two in the middle there but that's that's a lot of steel in that little wall there as you can see you can barely see down there so yeah almost done getting to the end of rebar getting to the end of ICF pretty soon we'll be working on interior stuff so let's see how we did
what this is, it's a, it's a laser level. This shoots a, a laser around in a circle and the sensor picks it up. And if it's, uh, if you're high, it beeps fast. If you're low, it beeps slow. So you put this on the top of the wall and this will tell you what it's doing. And we're pretty darn good. Our worst spot is about a quarter inch out. Not too bad. Saturday after Canada Day, back at the house. Pretty much got everything ready to go. We're pouring this, this main floor on Monday. Got everything strapped. Looks kind of crazy when it's at this stage, but once you get it stripped, it looks nice again. But, you know, even though we had the corners clipped in that basement pour, some of them pulled apart a little bit. So I figured I'd go overboard here and clip them and strap them should fix that problem this is all good our membranes on our double membrane I guess we're backfilled we changed our plan here we originally were going with a wood deck so we have that wooden ledger up there uh, we decided to change our minds here and go with uh, we get one made out of concrete concrete steps concrete patio and there's never anything to sand or steam or you know you could shovel it and not worry about it hooking boards and nails and you know why fight with it right we'll just spend the money now buy once cry once you know that's how she goes so this is this wall ready to go oh up here i've got to cut in a beam pocket we also changed this here. Originally we had, there was going to be a post kind of right between the door and the window there to hold this section of the roof up. We decided we didn't want that post there. We'll just keep it as a railing, keep that all nice and open. So we had to go from a double two by 10 to a triple two by 12. So I need to make a beam pocket up there um, before Monday. If you don't know what a beam pocket is, I will take you to the basement and show you because I am fixing the foam on our current beam pocket right now. What you do is you leave a little cutout, like a little shelf basically for a beam to sit on. But there's the beam pocket there. So we just, uh, this time on this one, we just made a, a something that was close to the size of the beam out of foam and stuck it in there. Then we had the crane come and drop the beam on. And this is what that looks like here. So this beam is just sitting on the concrete up here. So we, we're gonna, this will actually get filled in with concrete on our next pour. So I'm just kind of sticking the foam back in as best I can. And I'll spray foam that up and plywood it. And then once the concrete is poured, that'll all be filled in and Solid and that beam will be held in place, it can't move. So that's today's mission. I got that side and that side to do. Another thing I did this weekend was this here. Um, this is our water line coming into the house from the well. And we've got that water line going back out to the well there. So I thought it was a great idea, but Jim, the guy who installed this for us recommended just sleeving this into a weeping tile. Those two ho those two pipes are in here, along with the electrical lines going uh, out for that well pump. And we'll bring it up on just a real soft angle up in here, and then you know I'll turn the pipes, whatever we need to do. But that way, if anything ever happens to those lines 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, we can dig it up at the front of the house here. And if we have a big enough hole and a strong enough couple of guys, we could rip that line right out of the house here and pull a new one in or whatever. 
you know, once the floor is here, um, if you need to do anything, you're jackhammering. And we have heating lines and insulation under the floor. I don't want to ever have to worry about that. So I thought that was a great idea. We have the piles for our garage done. This here. So the ones with uh, two bars, this is going to be for the grade beam. We've got a four and a half foot grade beam that ties into the house there. And the ones with the four bars, these are going to be to support the floor. So these are too low. So these will get built up with sono tube. That's that cardboard, that's that cardboard circle tube. You've probably seen it all over construction sites. Sono tube is what it's called. Um, so we'll fill that up or build that up to wherever it needs to be at the height of those dowels. Slide some longer rebars in here and then we'll bend those over so that the uh, floor is sitting on piles and that'll make it, you know, should be a good strong floor. It could drive tractors on it without worrying about it. Whatever you want to do, right? You could bring some heavy tools in. Shouldn't have to worry about it because the floor is all supported on piles. And here's the other side of the grade beam where it's going to tie in. I showed you these sleeves on the inside. This is the heating lines for the garage floor, and this will be the electrical panel in the garage. So here's what that beam pocket looks like all patched up. It turned out pretty good. So that little, you know, that foam will pop it off of there so it's flush. And that'll all fill in with concrete. Lock that beam in place. After Monday, that beam can't move. Another big day today. Pouring the main floor. It's about 7 o'clock. Truck's supposed to be here about 10. So I imagine the pump will be here about 9.30. The guys will start showing up around then. But after today, we should have a complete main floor. So spent yesterday kind of doing dummy checks, making sure we had everything all buttoned up. All our strapping done, all our braces done. We got everything uh, strung yesterday. Made sure all the walls bow in so that you push them out because these, these braces, they don't pull, they can only push. Oh, good thing I came. A couple of straps to do there. I better get those on. That's why we check. So, a couple things that are different on this one. <clears throat> Remember, uh, we cut those holes in the bottoms of the window bucks on the last one, and it worked. Like, we got the concrete down there, but some of them we had to fight. So, this time we just cut them wide open. We'll pour it right in there and get the vibrator all over the place. Should make life a lot easier. You know, you can see in that, that video there how much time we spent at the bottoms of these window bucks trying to get the concrete to move. Shouldn't have that problem this time. <clears throat> yeah, and like I was saying, I kind of went, went overboard on all these corners. We have them clipped on the top and the bottom and strapped, most of them on the inside and the outside, wherever there's a window or a door kind of near a corner. We strap the heck out of it because those have to stay those have to stay level and square or you know stuff is going to get complicated later so we are pretty much ready to go this is it big day today again mm -hmm. 